on my dirt road out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so they just run. So I do that with the dogs too. But every day I'm taking a different dog on a heel. So they see bicyclists, and traffic, and uh, car horns, and kids. It's right by Turlock High School. Um, and Britt and I, she'll take a, her Boston Terrier and I'll take one of my dogs. And we're just walking for two and a half miles. I think that's very important for people. So they do that. I like to track three days a week. In reality, lately, I've been so busy, I've tracked two times a week. But if you guys want to compete tracking, three days is prime. Four is better. What you were talking about, the other guy we're talking about every day, that's too much for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing, I like three. I do obedience every day. Every day I'm doing obedience. Not routine. Maybe just something small. Let's teach you to go in your place. Place. Let's teach you a leg weave. Let's teach you a spin behind. Um, I back tie my dogs five days a week on the back tie and play with them. I haven't been doing that lately, but when they're young, all the way up until 18 months old, they're on that pole every single day. Um, and it's short. And I just got this from my mentors. Dogs think in the crate. Once they're in the back tie, we do not hang out. You're back in the crate. I put them back in the crate. And my mentor just said, thinking takes place in the crate. And I, I believe that. So I do my obedience. We don't hang out. You're back in the crate. Um, they're out many times throughout the day, though. Then um, um, I treadmill five days a week. I have my mechanical two, slap mill three. The next week, slap mill two, mechanical three. So I mix it up. So they have to be in very, very good shape, like an athlete, um, where I want to see them ripped and in shape. And I don't think enough people in Schutzen look at our dogs as athletes. What age do you start the treadmill? I start probably at 16 months. Okay. So wait till they've had their... I wait for the growth plates and yeah. everything in. Yeah. I don't like forced walks too early. So if we go for a walk, Right now we'll go for a walk and obviously puppies just kind of follow you. And if I'm not trusting the six month old dog, I'll just have a long line. I want you just to explore, that's in the country. My heel walks, where you have to kind of be by my sides is about a year when I start going in town. So it's about a year old. Um, so they see, they see the world. Uh, and I go into a very safe area where I know there's no dogs uh, that are going to attack my dog. So you got to kind of scout out your town, but I have to drive, you know, I have to drive to get to that walking spot. It's very easy to just always have an okay command and go for my walk down my dirt road, but it's not really teaching them the life and sounds and cities. And smell. <coughs> I think that makes my concentration and obedience a lot better. Um, I do protection about two times a week. Protection is not too hard if you have genetically strong dog and it genetically has it and you have a talented helper that can bring the dog up even one day a week you can get, make a lot of progress because mostly his protection is what bite. control yeah five bites on a three everything else is control um so that's why i showed you guys on the back tie when we're on the back tie i'm teaching you something something that i did not do with uh, i thought about this with my uh about 12 years ago, one of my uh, old competition dogs, he was getting, I forget if he's retired or getting ready for retirement. And I'm like, no, he's, he's getting ready for retirement. I said, when's the last time I taught you something new? It was always like a little straighter. I think I was making it kind of boring. So I started teaching him dumb tricks. Like, go do something dumb, you know, like, can you roll over? Can you go uh, open the refrigerator? I don't know. I think. Opera conditioning with shaping behaviors is very powerful in the dog's mind. Um, I like shaping behaviors on young dogs. Like Then there's a point you must do it, like I was talking about. So that's kind of my regiment on my dogs. But with that amount of time I'm spending with my dogs, what do you think the relationship is? Pretty strong. This one thing I don't like about club. This is one thing I don't like about club days at our place. Remember you, I said put yourself on a spectrum. You're too hard on your dogs. You're too soft on your dogs. Perfect handler. I'm here. I always fight that I need to be more soft. Soft. So the phrase that we have, because I'd like to give you, not to go into old war stories, but my dad's dad died when he was four and his mom when he was 10. He had no parents. He was a wreck. He was like 
going nowhere in life. And he went in the Marine Corps. And the Marine Corps straightened him out. And he became very, then he, be, you know, he got a college GI Bill and became a college professor and all that, high school and college. But guess how he raised us? Like little freaking Marines. We towed the line. I'm, I'm not kidding. My brother and I, we towed the line. You know why I didn't rebel and do bad things in high school? I have a phrase that says, discipline without rapport brings rebellion. Discipline without relationship, it brings rebellion. I never rebelled in high school because my dad loved us. He held us. He told us he loved us. He never missed one of my games. Um, but if I did not have that other side of the coin, that love side, I know me. I would have said, screw this. I'm like, I'm going to do bad things. Now I'm in it for Joel. I don't like club days because people see me strict with my dog on club days. You know what they don't see? Walks. Hey, my buddy. I, they don't see the other side of the coin, so I tell people, this is, you're only seeing a tiny piece of the pie of my dog's life. So when we're talking about relationship, Jane, I love hand feeding. I like you. I like you too. Everything is about dating. I was giving this example to them when you guys weren't here, Carl. I said, my wife and I have been married 30 years. If on our first date I picked her apart or vice versa, like, why do you talk like that? You dress funny. There's no second date. But after 30 years of marriage, she can get on to me hard. But there's a long relationship. So I tell people, never end that dating phase with your dog. I see people with young dogs that they have no relationship and they're trying to correct the dog. I'm like, this is not going to end well. So when you hear me talking about the correction part of this, I don't ever want you to forget this other side of the coin. And if you're a little too soft on your dogs, if you say, perfect handler, I'm a little too easy on my dogs. You might need to come to the dark side. I need to come to the lighter side. All of us fight that inner demon, I believe. I think all of us need to find that balance, whatever it is for you. Uh, but if you guys think of like, in, in, I know it takes time. Like taking a, having a dog is like raising a child. It takes a lot of time and patience. But if you start thinking about what is your schedule with your dogs? Like what do I do with my dogs? And then more importantly, what's my goal? What is my goal with this dog? Some people's like, I just want to get a BH, or I just want to have fun, or I want to go down this rabbit hole deep, like deep, like high competition. Um, that might change your everyday interaction. So if you, so I have club members, I say, what's your goal? And they say, I just want to get a BH. I might try for a one. It seems fun. I don't know if I have time. So I'm like, okay, why am I going to nitpick that person apart like your sits a little crooked? So if that's your goal, but... This one lady told me that I'm gonna go for a one, but I don't really care, I don't have time. Well, she's back by the car crying, and she's like, how come you didn't help me more with this? I'm like, you said you didn't really care. You're not being fair, you do care. So you weren't being honest with your goal. She goes, I didn't think I cared, but now, I'm like. Now I care. Well, <laughs> now we have to make everything much more that exact, because mind. if I look at an exercise, and I'm like, that's passing. If I'm, if I'm the judge, I'm gonna give that 77. It's passing. Yeah. But then don't be upset if it's a 77, if you're just kind of fiddling. But if they like, I want high competition, then you pick everything apart. I mean, you're picking everything apart. Any questions on that? How you guys uh, are with your dogs or thoughts? Because maybe you do something that I haven't thought of. I'm like, that's a really good idea. I need to do that with my dogs. I take my um, 